Hello, welcome to lesson 14, exercise one, mastering Java. Here we're going to create an array that holds four elements, and these four elements will be holding strings. So the array is going to end up holding four strings. Store these strings into the array when the array is initialized. Popeye, the sailor, man. So those are four separate strings. And upon initialization, we want to assign each of these to elements of the array. Next, we want to create a second array. Uh, this one's going to hold five string elements, but basically we're going to create this array first, and after this array is created, we're going to store the following strings into the five elements. Here I come to save the day. So here's a string, here's a string, here's a string, this is a string, and this is a string. So five strings. So in the second case, we're going to create the array first, and then we're going to assign the string elements to the array. Then we want to print out the contents of both arrays to the screen, to reassemble the phrases. So we want to kind of say them as a sentence. Popeye the Sailor Man would be a sentence. Here I come to save the day is a sentence. So uh, the first one is this one here. We're creating an array um, of string objects. So basically the type of uh, what the array is going to hold is out in front. So that's why it says string. Uh, and here's the name of the array. We call it array one. The double brackets indicate it's a one dimensional array. And we don't really specify the length of the array here because in this case we're actually providing the contents and Java's smart enough to know that we have four elements of the array and so this is an array of length four. So inside of the curly brace, as much as we've done in the past when we've created arrays to hold integers, you can just populate with commas in between the elements of the array. It's just that when we're storing strings we need to put the quotations around there as well. Alright, so this is the first array. The second array is called array2. It also holds string objects, but on the right hand side, instead of specifying what's going in there, we just create a new object of type string that's going to hold five elements. So in this case, we're reserving the memory for five elements for strings to go into this array, but we're not actually telling Java yet what's going to go into there, and that's what we've asked for in our problem. Now, these statements here actually store the phrases, the strings, into the different elements of array number two. Notice that we always start counting uh, with element zero of arrays and uh, also of strings as well. So the first string goes into with index zero, the next string goes with index one, and so on. Zero, one, two, three, four ends up being five different elements in array two, which is exactly what we created, five elements in that array. So we put these strings into there, and the next thing we want to do is print them to the screen. So for the first print statement, we're literally going to go into the print line statement. We're going to say array number one, element zero, and then we're going to put a space, and then array one, element one. Then we're going to put a space, element two, space, element three, and then we have the same thing underneath it, array number two, element zero, one, two, three. Now this one has more elements because the second array has five elements, the first array has four. So basically you just put these uh, guys in here, these elements of the array, into the print statement just like we've always done in the past. These elements of these arrays contain strings, but print, the print line statement knows how to handle that. We're just putting the spaces between the words. So let's go ahead and save and run this and we will see that we have Popeye the Sailor Man, here I come to save the day. And those are assembled in terms of sentences by just putting the elements of the string into the print statement and putting the spaces between them. Simple little example, but the purpose of it is to show you several things. The first thing is to show you how to create an, an array of string objects. Second thing is you can either populate what goes into the array when you create it, or you can just kind of create the placeholders for however many elements you need, and you can make those assignments later, what strings actually go into there. And finally, you can access any of the string elements that you're storing in your array just by using the index notation, just as if we were doing it before with integers or double precision uh, decimal numbers or whatever. In other words, arrays can store integers, floats, characters, strings, as very versatile, and this is how you handle it when using arrays of strings. So make sure you understand this and um, uh, follow me on to the next lesson where we will continue working with uh, strings and with arrays in Java.